Well, hello and welcome to my latest career matchup. I ain't done one of these for some considerable time. And, as you can tell by the length of this one, I've come back with an insane career matchup. Not only insane for the length of video, which I'm no longer used to doing, um, so I'll try and get through it best I can, um, but also for the insanity um, of the career matchup itself. Um, these two guys to me, Jimmy McLannan and Manny Pacquiao, are all-time greats, both of them, okay? Um, I rate them both similar in a similar way historically. Um... Some aspects of one fighter or the other, better the other, okay? But we're going to go through the career matchup. Um, big respect to both of these fighters, okay? Because both of these fighters, in their time, you know, Pacquiao for his time, McLanin for his time, fought an insane amount of opposition, okay, for careers that are well under 100 fights, especially when you look at many careers of well over 100 or 200 fights that I look at on a regular basis. These two guys, for their career size, have fought... A stupid level of opposition, okay, and we're going to go through their careers 20 fights at a time. I'm listing their main opponents as in the style of my blue screens, but matched against each other. Um, and we're going to compare their stats through. Then I've got a final slide uh, where I'll go through some final stats not covered on the matchup itself. But are you ready? Okay, this is a big one 48 plus minutes. <laughs> Well, the first 20 professional fights for both fighters, Jimmy McLaren goes 18 win, no loss, 2 draw with 4 KOs. So he goes unbeaten in his first 20 professional fights. Uh, Manny Pacquiao goes 19 wins with just the one loss, no draws and 11 KOs. So off the bat, Pacquiao is putting more men away. Uh, McLaren has a combined record of the same, 18 win, no loss, 2 draw with 4 KOs. And Pacquiao has the same record of 19 win, 1 loss, no draw with 11 KOs. So first 20 professional fights right now, as we can see on Pacquiao, side. Pacquiao's side is bare at the moment, although that changes uh, in a big way to come. Uh, but Jimmy McLaren beat former top 10 rated contender, young nationalista. He then fought Hall of Fame fighter um, and one of great flyweight champions of all time, Fidel LaBarba, who was top 10 and top 3 rated and a Hall of Famer. Uh, Jimmy McLaren beats Fidel LaBarba and forget this, don't forget this is his first 20 professional fights. He's already fighting Hall of Famers. He then fights Fidel LaBarba a second time, okay, gaining a draw um, in that result, so not not maintaining the result. But then he jumps in with a second Hall of Famer in his first 20 professional fights. That is one Memphis Palmar, who has a career video ready, and you will not believe his career, uh, for those people who don't know of him. Uh, meanwhile, Jimmy McLaren makes it five fights against men under criteria on this slide it, with his trilogy fight against Fidel LaBarba, okay, which after the win and the draw, McLaren goes back for a third time, and the top 10 and top 3 rated Hall of Fame champion Fidel LaBarba Barber is again beaten by Jimmy McLaren. So Jimmy McLaren wins that trilogy there with La Barber and McLaren's trilogies are also the focus of an upcoming accomplishment fee fight run video. So after the first 20 professional fights, Pacquiao has zeros against champions, but Lanning's already had three, okay, against the one fighter, Fidel LaBarber. He's two win, no loss, one draw. Against all of famous, McLaren also shoots into advantage with two win, no loss, two draw. Having had four fights against Hall of Fame fighters, um, Pacquiao is zeros. Jimmy McLaren also has fought four rated fighters, the three against LaBarber and Young Nationalista. Um, so he's three win, no loss, one draw against top 10 rated fighters to Pacquiao's zero. And McLaren has had three fights against one top rate, three rated fighter at the moment. His record is two win, no loss, one draw. Pacquiao is zeros. And against ring champions, neither fighter has fought a ring champion yet. Um, so McLaren is zeros and Pacquiao is zeros. So really on first slide, um, big respect to Jimmy McLaren fighting a trilogy against one of the great flyweight fighters of all time in his first 20 professional fights and then cramming another draw in there with the second Hall of Famer. Uh, that's one fifth of his first 20 professional fights against Hall of Fame opposition. <laughs> But this matchup hasn't really kicked off into high gear yet. Um, do you care to jump onto the next slide where things heat up a little bit for both of them before we get to a really insane slide? So this next slide is a big upkeep on this one, okay? Jimmy McLaren goes 15 win, 4 loss, 1 draw with 5 KOs. Pacquiao has a cleaner looking record, way more KOs. He, uh, Pacquiao goes 18 win, 1 loss, 1 draw with 17 knockouts. So McLaren from 40 fights has a record now of 33 win, 4 loss, 3 draw and 9 KOs. Pacquiao, meanwhile, has a record now of 37 wins with 2 defeats, 1 draw and 28 knockouts. So uh, Pacquiao um, has clearly got more
more wins from his 40 pro fights so far, way more knockouts. Uh, for what that means because it's based on opposition that we are now going to so Jimmy McLarnin his first fight on here is against top 10 and top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer one of great band and weight fighters Charles Bud Taylor um, you know to me a fair legitimate top 10 band and weight he then fights top 10 and top 3 ring champion and Hall of Famer the great flyweight champion from the Philippines Pancho Villa who of course um, ended Jimmy Wilde's multi-year lineal flyweight title run uh, he then fights another Hall of Famer so the third different Hall of Famer um, in fighting top 10 top 3 ring champion Hall of Famer Jackie Fields the former welterweight champion before going back in with top 10 top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer Charles Bud Taylor now McLaren lost the first fight he beats Bud Taylor in the rematch and then McLaren goes back in for another trilogy fight this time to finish out his trilogy with Bud Taylor um, after losing winning McLarnin loses the third fight to Charles Bud Taylor. McLarnin then does beat top 10 rated and top 3 rated contender Joey Sangor before losing to former top 10 rated contender Johnny Farr. Um, and word on another trilogy upcoming, um, Jim McLarnin beats former top 10 and top 3 tough contender um, Joe Glick, who has a staggering resume himself, before beating former top 10 contender Lope Tenorio. So, on to Pacquiao's side. The next slide, I'm, I'm, I'm warming up for the next slide. The next slide is Technically insane on both sides. Um, Manny Pacquiao beats Chok Chai Chok Vivat, okay, his first rated fighter under criteria I use in his career. He was top 10 rated down at flyweight. Pacquiao beats him. He then beats lineal flyweight champion, top 10 and top 3 rated Chat Chai Sasakul um, to win the WBC um, flyweight title. And then a few fights later, loses it. Well, well, he didn't lose a title. He'd lost a title beforehand. But Magon Singh Surat becomes champion. Uh, Magon Singh Surat is top 10 and top 3 rated champion. And he beats Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's next fight against a rated opponent is against Nadal Hussain, former top 10 rated fighter. Pacquiao beats him. And then he becomes a two-way world champion, of course, beating top 10 and top 3 rated champion Lelo Ledwaba. Now, Pacquiao fails to unify, OK, against um, former world champion. Agapito Sanchez um, before then beating former top 10 and top 3 rated champion Jorge Alicia Julio so both guys okay both up their opposition okay in terms of fights against men under criteria on this slide um, but McLarnin now has 8 fights against champions okay um, with 5 win 2 loss 1 draw Pacquiao has a record against champions now of 3 win 1 loss and 1 draw so McLarnin has had more fights against champion and champions and at the moment more wins now Matt Larnin has powered ahead in the Hall of Fame fights he has nine fights already against Hall of Fame fighters nearly one quarter of his fights in his first 40 year against Hall of Fame fighters which is ridiculous he has a record of five win two loss two draw Manny Pacquiao at the moment in the number that will change is zero 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 and against top 10 rated fighters it's a similar story McLarnin has surged into a lead he's now had 13 fights against top 10 rated fighters including nine win three loss one draw Pacquiao has now shot up to six including five win one loss um, and no draws and against top three rated fighters McLarnin has already screamed um, to ten double figures um, he's got seven win two loss and one draw Pacquiao has four top three fights at the moment with three win one loss and no draw and McLarnin has beaten two individual ring champions at the moment he's two win no loss no draw they are Pancho Villa and Jackie Fields um, Manny Pacquiao has yet to be a ring champion um, so his record is 0-0 Zero, zero. Compared to the first slide, which McLarnin was clearly an advantage of, and this slide, you know, is closer than the first slide. Would I still edge it for Pacquiao or McLarnin? I think I'd still edge it to McLarnin on this slide. Okay, in this super tough matchup. And uh, don't get me wrong, Pacquiao's no slouch. Um, but just for beating the multiple Hall of Famers, um, having a trilogy against one Hall of Famer who's one of the great band and weight fighters of all time, um, beating uh, one of the great flyweights of all time in Pancho Villa, beating Jackie Fields, then beating other fighters um, like Joe Glick. On Pacquiao's side, he's beaten Chachai Sasakulu, of course, who became lineal champion, courtesy of Yuri Abakakov. He then lost to Meg Goan Singsarat. He also beats... Uh, quite highly rated super bantamweight champion Lelo Ledwaba um, but on the slide okay matching the 20 slides fights against each other I would have to edge it for McLarnin Pacquiao has beaten a lot of good fighters down there but he's beaten no fighter who I would really say is worthy of being Hall of Fame or a fighter that is rated as one of 10 greatest fighters in any division they fought in you know those guys just are not going to rate that highly whereas McLarnin has beat a probable 
legitimate top 10 flyweight in Villa. He's beating a probable top 10 bantamweight in Charles Bud Taylor. So I just aged the level of opposition to Matlani. But that slide is much tougher. Uh, Pacquiao's come roaring back after that first slide. And on the next slide, we are going to see complete insanity. Um, because, well, put it this way. On the next slide, the list is so big that how I do the stats at the bottom, I had to put them sideways. Because there's so many names on there that I had to put them sideways. I couldn't fit the names on other than that. <laughs> so that tells you how insane it's going to be. But definitely match up so far, I'd, I'd certainly say I have Jimmy McLaren ahead. When you add the names off the first slide onto that list there, you can see that not only is McLaren in fighting more rated fighters comparable for his time, but he's also fighting multiple Hall of Fame fighters. You know, Ledwaba was a good fighter. Even Hogley's Elysio Julio wasn't a bad fighter. Singsrat, Sasakul, they were all good fighters, okay, but they are not Hall of Fame worthy fighters that Pacquiao is beating. So based on that and based on the fact that also McLaren has not only fought Hall of Famers, but he's had trilogies against them, winning a trilogy against Lababa. Um, losing the trilogy to Charles Bud Taylor but still gaining one win in there and going unbeaten in the trilogy win two win no loss one draw against uh, La Barba you know I have to edge the match up at the moment to Jimmy McLarnin but if you think McLarnin and Pacquiao's list there are decent then you are wrong okay because the next slide like I say it goes insane so at the moment McLarnin has more wins over champions and we have to factor Pacquiao's in the alphabet era as well okay but he's got more wins against champions at the moment um, he's clearly got more wins against Hall of Famers although Pacquiao changes his Hall of Fame number radically on the next slide he's also had more fights and more wins against top 10 rated fighters he's had more fights and more wins against top 3 rated fighters and he's had more fights and more wins against ring champions so I did that to that Hall of Fame calibre opposition the trilogies I have to give it to McLarney but like I said make no mistake on my respect for Manny Pacquiao when I refer to him I refer to him as the great Manny Pacquiao when I pass his name because he is an all time great and never mind just a modern all time great Pacquiao is an all time great across the history of the sport okay but a stat matchup, a, a, a career matchup is a career matchup. I have to go with what I see. But my respect for Pacquiao knows few bounds, as people who follow my channel know. So, I'm, yeah, I'm being very careful because both of these are all-time greats to me. And I want to make sure I show respect while judging the career matchup. Show respect that both fighters deserve. Now, look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, people. This has to be one of the most insane... Career matchup slides I have ever seen. Now, I edged the first two slides, both of them to McLarnin, but look at this monster. Look how Pacquiao roars back on this slide. That is an insane slide. Now, McLarnin goes 16 win, 4 loss, no draw with 8 KOs. Pacquiao again has the cleaner record, going 17 win, 2 loss, 1 draw on 10 KOs. And Pacquiao's cleaner record means more on this slide than it did the last two because his level of opposition. So McLarnin at the moment from 60 fights has 49 wins, 8 losses, 3 draws and 17 KOs. Pacquiao has 54 wins, 4 loss, 2 draw and 38 KOs. So Pacquiao has more wins and KOs from the overall record. This is insane. Now, there's 20 fights per slide. McLarnings fills all 20. All 20 opponents were top 10 rated who he fought in this 20 fight run. Pacquiao was no slouch either. 18 of his 20 were top 10 rated at the minimum. I mean, but both of these guys have done amazingly well on this slide. It is insane. Let's go through them. So, McLaren beats Luis Kid Kaplan, okay, top 10, top 3 ring champion, Hall of Famer. He then beats tough contender Billy Wallace, okay, who's top 10 and top 3 rated. And then he beats another Hall of Famer, his second Hall of Famer on damn slide already, when he beats top 10 and top 3 rated, very underrated fighter. Um, and Hall of Famer Sid Terris, the dynamic lightweight contender of the 20s. He then fights another Hall of Famer, his third Hall of Famer in first four fights in this fight run. And remember, unlike other slides and other careers, all these fights are on the trot in his career. So he's fought three Hall of Famers in four fights. Insane. Sammy Mandel, the great lightweight king, one of great lightweight champions for me. Top 10 and top three rated Hall of Famer. Um, McLaren loses to Sammy Mandel. He does then beat um, top 10 rated Philip McGraw before then beating former top 10 and top 3 rated Stanislaus Loeza. He then loses to very tough top 10 and top 3 rated contender Ray Miller before revisiting an earlier win with Joe Glick. He now completes his trilogy against Joe Glick beating top 10 and top 3 rated Glick in the first fight on this slide and then fighting him a second time to win his second from three trilogies in his career um, winning the trilogy 
energy against Joglik. 3-0 and Joglik was no pushover, let me tell you. But McLaren then goes back to Ray Miller, who has suffered a defeat on this slide. Ray Miller top 10 and top 3 rated. And McLaren avenges the defeat, okay? He beats Ray Miller in the rematch. He then beats a fighter who was, at uh, one year, pound pound number one rated in my all-time ratings, if I recall, Sergeant Sammy Baker, an excellent fighter, top 10 and top three rated, before revisiting another fighter he's lost to. The two fighters he's lost to is avenged one to Ray Miller. He now avenges the earlier defeat on this slide to the great Sammy Mandel, the Hall of Fame ring champion at lightweight, um, gaining a revenge win. He then beats top 10 and top three rated contender Ruby Goldstein, before winning another trilogy is third from four against Sammy Mandel by gaining t his second win out of the three fights on this slide he then beats another very tough fighter top 10 and top 3 rated champion Young Jack Thompson um, before then beating former top 10 contender Al Singer before going into another trilogy with another Hall of Famer McLarnin Fights and losers to top 10 and top 3 rated Hall of Famer. Uh, ferocious body puncher and combination puncher Billy Patrol. Real tough guy. McLarnin loses the first fight to Billy Patrol, but then comes back and beats him in a rematch, and then comes back and beats him in the third fight. He has a trilogy fight on the trot against um, Billy Patrol. All three fights on the trot, and he closes out this insane slide by beating top 10 and top, uh, by losing to top 10 and top 3 rated ring champion Hall of Famer Lou Brewillard. That slide is insanity for McLarnin. But so is Pacquiao's. So on Pacquiao's side, he beats former top 10 and top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer Marco Antonio Barrera, one of the great modern Mexican champions. He then draws at featherweight fighting for two belts against top 10 and top 3 rated ring champion and uh, Hall of Famer Juan Manuel Marquez, before then fighting his third modern great Mexican multiweight champion on the trot, uh, virtually uh, top 10 and top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer Eric Morales. He loses... Pacquiao then comes back and beats Hall of Fame top three rated Morales in a rematch. Pacquiao then beats former top 10 and top three rated champion Oscar Larios, uh, a former champion from a lower weight and a very good fighter himself, before beating and winning a trilogy fight against top 10 and top three rated Hall of Famer Eric Morales. You see, Milanin is not the only one who can fight trilogies against Hall of Famers in a short fight run. Uh, Pacquiao then beats top 10 and top three rated Jorge Solis, before then fighting a second fight against modern Hall of Fame Mexican star Marco Antonio Barrera Pacquiao gains a second win and then after the draw to Juan Manuel Marquez he has another fight against a modern Mexican multiweight Hall of Famer Juan Manuel Marquez in the rematch Pacquiao this time beats the former Hall of Fame ring champion Marquez before then beating top 10 and top 3 rated champion David Diaz to catch a lightweight strap Pacquiao then beats another Hall of Fame name okay against top 10 and top 3 rated Hall of Famer um, and ring champion Oscar De La Hoya the golden boy before then destroying Ricky Hatton at light welterweight to capture that lineal strap. Uh, Hatton was top 10 and top 3 rated ring champion. Before then, uh, going back up and beating another now Hall of Famer, Miguel Angel Cotto, top 10 and top 3 former ring champion and Hall of Famer. Um, and then Pacquiao beats former top 10 rated champion, Joshua Clotty. Before beating multiple time welterweight champion, Antonio Margarito, at light middleweight with that fantastic performance. Uh, Margarito in his career was top top 10 and top 3 rated champion before beating another Hall of Famer in top 10 and top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer Shane Mosley okay another multi-weight champion and Pacquiao closes out this insane slide finishing a trilogy winning the trilogy on this slide of course we know there's another fight to come but Pacquiao wins the trilogy on this side uh, two win no loss one draw um, against modern Mexican great Juan Manuel Marquez before losing the first controversial fight to top 10 and top 3 rated champion Desert Storm Tim Bradley another multi-weight champion oh let me get a quick drink I don't know about you guys, okay, but both of these fighters have done pure insanity on that slide against each other. That's what I mean. McLean and Pacquiao is one of the best career matchups. They have a similar fight number, fairly close in fight number. They both fought trilogies. They both fought 
a stupid amount of opposition and the careers are quite similar how they go McLaren has a quicker start of the first few slides but then it's pedal to metal for both now McLaren has 14 fights against champions he has 9 win 4 loss 1 draw Manny Pacquiao courtesy partially of Alf Beira shot to 22 uh, with a massive 17 win 3 loss and 2 draw from those 22 fights against champions and McLaren has now gone to 18 fights against Hall of Fame fighters with a record of 11 win 5 loss and 2 draw but Pacquiao in one slide has gone from no fights of all of famous to 11 so 11 of those 18 fights there are against now hall of fame fighters for pacquiao and he has an incredible virtual you know consistent win run aside from the one loss and one draw he also has nine wins but he's gone from zero to 11 in one slide of 20 fights that is insane now, McLarnin has had 33 fights, okay, against top 10 rated fighters. He has 25 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw, so he's had more fights under that criteria. But Pacquiao has a cleaner looking record, albeit a smaller number at 24. Pacquiao has 20 win, 3 loss and 1 draw. Against top 3 rated fighters, both of these guys, by 60 fight mark, have averaged over 33% of their career so far against top 3 rated fighters. It is pure insanity. Um, Lanning has 28 at the moment with 21 wins, 6 loss, 1 draw. Pacquiao has already shot to 21. He's already only one less than Floyd in fights against top 3 rated fighters. Uh, Pacquiao has a record of 17 win, 3 loss, 1 draw um, against top 3 rated fighters. And that was Floyd's career total. 22 against top 3 rated fighters. Pacquiao's going to overtake that clearly. And against ring champions, McLaren has 7 fights against ring champions, including 5 win, 2 loss. Pacquiao also has shot now up to 7. Okay, uh, all 7 of them on that slide. But Pacquiao is unbeaten, um, interestingly, against the ring champions. 6 win, no loss and 1 draw. Uh, the defeats to Edit Morales and Bradley, they were not ring champions. The draw, of course, Marquez, the first Marquez fight on here, there was. So at the moment, McLarnin um, has less fights against champions. Pacquiao stormed off into that, partially up by Elf Beira, partially by Pacquiao's opposition. I mean, just look at that. 17 of those 18 fighters on that slide are world champions for Pacquiao. Now, of course, McLaren didn't have as many belts, or divisions, etc. But that is still a major feat for Manny Pacquiao. It is still an incredible run. And 11 Hall of Fame fights out of 18 is also incredible. How many fights did McLaren have on here uh, against Hall of Famers? Four, six. He still had nine, considering, which is still insane, nearly 50% of all these fights. And like I said, McLaren's fights are all in a row. All 20 fights. That is how it looks on his career. Now, another thing they've both done here, okay, they have both fought multiple Hall of Famers in multiple trilogies. Now, on this slide, we know Pacquiao has a fourth fight with Marquez, but on this slide, he's fought a trilogy with Marquez, which is one two win, no loss, one draw. He's also fought a trilogy against Eric Morales, which he has won, two win, one loss, and no draw. Okay, and Bradley will convert to another trilogy, etc., etc. Manny Pacquiao, um, you know, has an incredible resume on that 18-fight slide. And like I say, when we look at Jim McLarnin, he completes a trilogy, carried on partially from last slide onto this one, with two more wins against Joe Glick, winning that 3-0. He's won a trilogy against the great lightweight King Sammy Mandel, uh, winning that two-win, one-loss, no draw. And he's also won a trilogy against Hall of Fame brutal lightweight uh, to fight Billy Patrol. If you thought Billy Patrol and he were on good form, you you had a tough fight on your hands, trust me. He was a great body puncher. He threw combinations. He was a nightmare. Uh, he was a tough fighter, hence his Hall of Fame standing now. He was elected to Hall of Fame even though he never held the title. Uh, sadly, some of the fighters don't get that um, credibility when they don't perceive to have held the world titles. But what both guys have done on here is remarkable. Pacquiao has a cleaner record and more KOs. McLarnin has more rated fights. Both of them have fought a stupid amount. From McLarnin's fights, you know, I said Pacquiao, 17 out of 18 of those fights are against top three rated fighters. 11 of them, 11 of 18 are against all of famous. 17 of 18 are against top three rated fighters. And Milan is no slouch either. He has 20 fights on that slide, a few more than Pacquiao, and a massive 18 of McLaren's opponents on there are against top three rated fighters and that is in one twenty fight run in his career. Both of these guys to me are they're almost at the pearl of gates. You know, yes they don't have resumes as big as some of the fighters that I rate very highly. But in terms of fighters based on their career total of fights, could I find another ten fighters um on say seventy fights who can match our better McLarnin or match and better Pacquiao? I think you've got a very, very hard job on your hands, you know, to find that. You know, 
So they are really in rarefied air for their career number. Can either of these guys' careers match up to Harry Grebs? Well, clearly no. Can they match up to Langford's? Clearly no in my book. You know, but compared to fighters of their career number, both of these guys are a major proposition for any fighter in history to match up against. You know, and that is the credit I have to give both fighters because the first two slides I edged to McLarnin, I could in some ways edge this to McLarnin, but I'm declaring this one a draw because even though McLarnin has a few more fights on there and has fought great fighters on there, Pacquiao has fought such a stupid level of opposition as well that, you know, that has to be respected. And even though McLarnin has done, maybe some people would say, well, we rate maybe Sammy Mandel and Patrol over Barrera and Morales and Marquez, but I think that's tighter cut than people would give it credit for. You know, I think if Barrera, Marquez, Morales were fighting those guys, those guys, those Hall of Famers on the side would have major fights on their hands. You know, that is just how it is. So when you look at both sides, all I can do on this slide, after edging first two to Milan, is just say, both sides have done amazingly well. I cannot critique anything about it. Even the defeats, you know, McLarnin avenged the first defeat to Sammy Mandel. He avenged the defeat to here on Ray Miller. He avenged the defeat on here to Billy Patrol. From McLarnin's three losses on this slide, he actually avenges three of those four losses on the same slide he's lost. And in two of those four losses, he has trilogies to avenge it. Similar with Pacquiao, he loses to Eric Morales. He comes back and has a trilogy to gain revenge on Morales, then win a trilogy fight. It is amazing what these guys have done. But at the moment, you know, Pacquiao has more wins against champions. McLarnin, more Hall of Fame wins. McLarnin, more top 10 rated wins. McLarnin, more top 3 rated wins. And Pacquiao, more ring champion wins. But that is 40 fights from these two guys combined that if you add together, is just dearthed with names. My goodness, and this is why, you know, when not talking McLaren here, but talking Pacquiao, this is why I call him the great Manny Pacquiao, because ultimately, when you go through careers of modern active world champions now, you know, there's a few fighters out there who've got really good resumes and accomplishments. But I can think of no fighter in the world, not even Canelo Alvarez, who can better Manny Pacquiao's resume. Canelo Alvarez's resume does not better Manny Pacquiao's. And it is going to be a while before Canelo can add enough names to a point where I will even agree or accept to agree that his career is matching Manny Pacquiao's in terms of resume. Even for Canelo now, I'd say it's going to take another 10, 15 fights. He's going to have to add way more names on there, more pound for pounders, more champions, more future Hall of Famers to be able to match Manny Pacquiao in a career comparison in the future. So, both of these all-time greats, okay, go into their final slide. Now, Jimmy McLaren goes 6 win, 3 loss, no draw, with 3 KOs, and Pacquiao has a further 12 fights going 8 win, 4 loss, no draw, 1 KO. McLaren retires with a record, okay, of 69 fights, including 55 wins, 11 losses, 3 draws, and 21 KOs. Manny Pacquiao only has 3 fights more in his career, going 62 wins, 8 losses, 2 draw, and 39 KOs. Now, McLaren considering that the last fight were in one run, there's nine fights there, there's nine fights there. These carry on in that same insane run. Now, McLarnin beats comebacking uh, former great lightweight king Benny Leonard, um, top 10 and top three rated ring champ Hall of Famer. He then beats a very capable and um, very tough Sammy Fuller, top 10, top three rated champion, before then beating another Hall of Famer. He's second on this slide, okay, when he beats top 10 and top three rated champion and Hall of Famer, Young Corbett the third. And if all the trilogies are not enough, McLaren goes into another trilogy. Okay, he loses to top 10 and top 3 rated champion and Hall of Famer, the great multiweight champion Barney Ross. McLaren comes back and gains a revenge win. He's very good at gaining revenge wins. See Ray Miller, you know, see Sammy Mandel, see Patrol, etc. Uh, but he doesn't gain the win in the trilogy this time. After beating Ross in second fight, uh, Barney Ross beats McLaren to win the trilogy 2-1 in Ross's favour in the trilogy fight. But then to close out, as though he has 
hasn't fought enough top opposition already. He fights the great five-time lineal champion three-weight king Tony Canzaneri, who has one of the best resumes in boxing history. Tony Canzaneri, top 10, top three ring champion, Hall of Famer, beats Jimmy McLarnin, but typical Jimmy McLarnin style, he then comes back in a fairly close rematch and beats Tony Canzaneri in a revenge fight, something that McLarnin has done all through his career. He's avenged many of those 11 defeats there by beating the fighters who beat him. And he does the same to five-time lineal champ Canzaneri. He then closes his incredible career out with a win over the Hermica Hurricane, one of the toughest and most durable lightweights, who gave Henry Armstrong hell in two fights, including beating Armstrong to take his lightweight title. Uh, top 10 and top three ring champ Hall of Famer, the Hermica Hurricane Lou Ambers. So that closes out an incredible 29-fight run for Jim McLarnin. Now, Manny Pacquiao, he loses the fourth fight, of course, um, to Juan Manuel Marquez, top 10, top three ring champ and all of famer. Pacquiao comes back, then beats top 10 and top three rated former champion Brandon Rios before coming back and avenging an earlier defeat at the end of the last slide to Desert Storm Tim Bradley, who is top 10 and top three rated champion. Now, Pacquiao then completely uh, bosses the dog against Chris Algieri, uh, top 10, top three rated champion in a one-sided demolition over the 12-round distance. He then fights the unification fight with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, the biggest grossing fight in boxing history up to now Floyd of course top 10 top 3 ring champ Hall of Famer multiweight champ we don't need to say any more on Floyd he then beats top 10 and top 3 rated champion Tim Bradley in the trilogy fight so like Morales um, now Tim Bradley follows in that ilk by being beaten by Pacquiao in a trilogy you see the symmetry between McLarnin and Pacquiao in many ways. Uh, both great fighters, but both often come back and avenge defeats and win trilogies against people who beat him. Uh, he then beats top 10 rated champion Jesse Vargas and then loses to top 10 rated champion Jeff Horn before coming back on that final three win run, um, beating top 10 and top three rated puncher Lucas Matisse. He then beats top 10 and top three rated multiweight champion Adrian Broner before then scoring um, that win over unbeaten one-time Keith Thurman top 10 top 3 rated champion Pacquiao then came back um, last year okay for his final fight he announced his retirement not long afterwards against top 10 and top 3 rated champion Yardenis Ugas so, McLarnin closes out with 23 fights against champions, going 15 wins, 7 loss, 1 draw. He ends on 26 fights against Hall of Famers, um, going 16 win, 8 loss, 2 draw. In fact, I'll give the other stats. Pacquiao ends, compared to McLarnin's 23 fights against champions, courtesy of a year or two. But Pacquiao ends on an insane 34 fights against champions. Now, just to give people an idea in my stat database, how high a number 34 is, that is approaching... The upper echelons of the all-time greats of Ted Kid Lewis, Jack Dillon, you know, these guys. That's what that number was headed towards. Okay, he's 25, 7 and 2. Pacquiao ends on 13 fights at the moment against all of famous. He may get even more added. He's had a surge of all of famous added over the last four or five years. He's currently 9 win, 3 loss, 1 draw. Severe winning record in there. So way less fights against all of famous. He's fought half the number of fights. But we'll see what Pacquiao adds going forward in future. Now, against top 10 rated fighters, McLarnin has a massive 42 from 69 fights. He has 31 win, 10 loss and 1 draw. But Pacquiao is no slouch either. Coming in with an alphabet here, a massive total of 36, including 28 win, 7 loss and 1 draw. Just to give you an idea, Floyd Mayweather has 27 for his career. Pacquiao's on 36. So now Pacquiao, officially by one. Uh, when he beat Thurman, he has won more fights against top 10 rated fighters than Floyd Mayweather by one. Meanwhile, in top three, both of these guys have an insane total of top three fights for a 70-ish fight career, both over 30. Now, McLarnin, okay, has 37 fights against top three rated fighters with a record of 27 win, nine loss and one draw. But Pacquiao's no slouch either. Uh, he comes in with a massive 31. 31 fights against top three rated fighters in the alphabet era of four belts is insane number. He has 24 win, six loss and one draw. So slightly less fights there, um, but also, um, you know, less defeats. And against ring champions, they end McLarnin has nine win, five loss, no draw um, from 14 fights against ring champions. But Pacquiao hadn't done bad either um, after those first two slides where he had zero to come back and have nine nearly double figures at six win two loss one draw so Pacquiao has way more fights against champions, well over 30. McLarnin has way more fights against all of famous but Pacquiao could add still a few more going forward in time now against top 10 rated fighters, McLarnin has 42 
McLaren has 42, Pacquiao has 36. Hold on a minute, my throat's mm. drying because I'm not used to doing videos this big. So really, McLaren has had six fights more against top 10 rated fighters. Um, but both of them are very similar. Pacquiao has less defeats, so they're both very similar in win number there. Um, you know, um, Jim McLaren in edges it, 31 wins against top 10 fighters to Pacquiao's 28. Uh, but both numbers for the career size are still incredible. And it's a similar story with top three fights. You know, McLaren in, um, has 27 wins from his fights against top three rated fighters. Pacquiao has less fights, but he's still not that far away on wins coming in at 24. And similar story uh, with the ring champions. So aside from the champions, McLarnin has had more fights against men. Uh, in fact, I'll put record all of Famer twice. Uh, the 31 10 and one is record against Raid, top 10 Raid. Uh, but basically, you know, McLarnin edges four of them. Pacquiao wins one clearly. Uh, McLarnin wins the Hall of Fame category at the moment more clearly. But the others, even though they're edged by McLarnin, are still quite close. And when you look at this matchup, on that slide, which list is better? I'm asking you people. Pacquiao has more fights on there. 12 fights listed there. Okay. Um, 12 fights listed there. 10 of them are against top three rated fighters from 12. All 12 are against world champions. On McLaren's side, he has nine fights. All nine of them against world champions. Eight of the nine against all of famous. And all nine of them are against fighters who are top three rated. On Pacquiao's side, he has two fights. He's lost them both against ring champions. On McLaren's side, you know, seven of those nine fights are against ring champions. Yeah, my throat's angry with me saying, why are you doing such a long video? I'm used to doing them like, you know, five minutes to 20 minutes nowadays. But when I look at two careers like this and I'm doing a career matchup, both of these guys deserve some time spending uh when you're looking at their incredible careers so when you look at that list uh, i don't know who you guys would pick is better me personally i think it's beyond doubt that jimmy mclaren's side is tougher you know he suffers three defeats on there pacquiao suffers four um but the three defeats on there um for mclaren two are to barney ross three weight champion one is to five-time lineal champion canzanari over three weights so all three of the losses on there McLarnin had were all to top Hall of Fame fighters. When you look on Pacquiao's side, he's lost to two Hall of Famers in Juan Manuel Marquez and Floyd Mayweather Jr. But he's lost to two non-Hall of Famers as well, Jeff Horn and Joe Dennis Ugas. So McLarnin has the better losses. I'm trying to nitpick here to figure which is best side. I mean, for me, I go for McLaren's side simply because, you know, even though there's some great names on Pacquiao's side, you know, Marquez, Bradley, Mayweather, Bradley, you know, Keith Thurman, etc. They can't quite match the stature of the Hall of Fame greats on the other side. You know, there's too many uh, Brandon Rios's, Algeries, Jesse Vargas's, Jeff Horns, etc. on there. But both guys, may I give a round of applause to both guys? For a sensational career and a sensational matchup. So when we look at some other information uh, on their careers, okay, we can see um, basically that Jim McLaren and Manny Pacquiao's stats line up. I wanted to put some pound for pound stats on there. Uh, I didn't really cover them on the slides. Uh, Jimmy McLaren has beaten 13 champions. Manny Pacquiao comes in with a massive 21. In Hall of Fame has beaten. McLaren at the moment has beaten more, but Pacquiao may get another two or three added potentially. McLaren has beaten 13 Hall of Famers. He's beaten the second highest total of all Hall of Famers in my database behind Harry Greb. Yes, more than Robinson, more than Armstrong, more than Archmore, more than all of them. Okay, he's second behind Harry Greb. Manny Pacquiao, though, at the moment has grown um, from two when I first did my database to now six. OK, so he's getting Hall of Famers added and he may get a few more added over time. Now, being pound for pound top 10 rated in my all time pound for pound rankings, Jim McLaren was pound for pound top 10 rated for three years. But Pacquiao is, con is more dominant in that one. Pacquiao has been top 10 rated in my all time pound for pound rankings Separate years, but adding to a decade at 10 years, which is incredible. And when we look at the number of pound-for-pound fighters beaten, both of these guys, in a rough 
70-ish fight career, okay? I've beaten an insane number of pound pound reared fighters. Jimmy McLaren comes in joint top in my entire database, um, having beaten 18 individual pound pound reared fighters. But Manny Pacquiao is no slouch either. He's beaten an incredible 13 pound pound reared fighters. So advantage McLaren in there. Uh, Pacquiao would have the advantage in pound pound top 10 rated. McLaren has beat more all of famous, but Pacquiao's beaten more champions. Do you see how this matchup goes? They're very close. Now, record against pound pound rated fighters at the moment. Okay, Jimmy McLaren has had 33. Well, at the moment. No, that's for Pacquiao. Jimmy McLaren has had 33 fights against pound pound rated fighters. Do we know that what that means? That means nearly half of his entire career. Nearly one in every two fights for McLaren's entire career were against men pound for pound rated. That is insane. Pacquiao, slightly less advantage, but still incredibly high. He has 21 fights against pound for pound rated fighters, and Pacquiao's numbers may change in future. But Pacquiao at the moment has a very, very good record, a severe winning record against the pound for pound disease fought with a record of 16 win, 4 loss, and 1 draw. Pound pound top three wins. Jimmy McLaren comes in with a massive 13. Now, you think some career, career videos, uh, pre rating videos and blue screens I'm putting up at minute, none of them have 13 pound pound top three wins. It is an insane number. But also, I can say from recent memory, none of them have had seven pound pound top three wins that Pacquiao has made. But McLaren has scored way more in that category. But again, we have to remember Pacquiao's pound pound stats may change um, in the future here or there. So, pound for pound number one wins. They are closer. Jimmy McLaren has scored five wins over pound for pound number one rated fighters. Manny Pacquiao comes in with three. But being pound for pound number one rated, it's advantage back Pacquiao. Jimmy McLaren was never rated pound for pound number one in my all-time rankings. But Manny Pacquiao has been pound for pound number one rated in three individual years. So, when we look on here at this insane slide... Pacquiao, courtesy of Alphabet Era, has beaten more champions. McLaren's beaten more Hall of Famers. Pacquiao, a way more dominant pound pound rated fighter. McLaren has beaten more pound pounders. He's had more fights against pound pounders and more wins. He's had more pound pound top three wins and more pound pound number one wins. Pacquiao has had more years rated as pound for pound number one fighter in the world. And just to let you know, because I couldn't put the scores up, but I checked the opposition scores out. Okay, the opposition fought total and the opposition beat total. And even though McLaren wins on both of those, Pacquiao is not far away at all from both the overall opposition fought and the opposition beat. They are actually quite close. McLaren edges both, but they are quite close. Now, one thing where Manny Pacquiao, I didn't do a slide on it, and I kind of regretted it afterwards. I should have done, um, but I couldn't delay the video. I had to do it now. But a slider should have been his title record. Now, Jimmy McLaren and Pacquiao have something else in common. They came from down around the flyweight region and both titled at welterweight. I know Pacquiao titled at middleweight, but to match them, they both came from flyweight region around there and both titled at welterweight. McLaren twice won the undisputed welterweight title. So he's a one-weight champion who's captured a lineal undisputed title on two occasions. Okay, McLaren never defended that belt. Pacquiao has been a bit different. Pacquiao has titled at uh, flyweight, Super Bantam, uh, Super Feather, Lightweight, Welterweight. He's titled at six weights. He's also won lineal titles in five weights. Okay. Another thing that Pacquiao has also done, whereas McLaren has been a two-time welterweight champion, Pacquiao has been a four-time welterweight champion. Okay, so Pacquiao has set a bit of history there. Is Pacquiao not also the oldest welterweight champion or something? Uh, I haven't double-checked all my records and updated them for a while. I've been too busy getting videos ready. Uh, but when Pacquiao retired, you know, and took the Yugas fight, uh, or he would have been the oldest welter champion if he won, or something along that line. I'll, I'll have to refresh my brain after that video. But in terms of title legacy, I have to give the title matchup if I'd have done a slide, Pacquiao has had dozens of world title fights across multiple ways. He's captured lineal titles in five ways. We cannot scoff at the fact that McLaren has been a two-time undisputed champion. Pacquiao has never even unified a belt. The three times he's fought for unified belts, he has failed. Okay, The first against Agapito Sanchez, it was a technical dr uh, draw. The next time he fought was against Juan Manuel Marquez for WBA and IBF featherweight titles. It was a draw. And the third time he tried to unify were against Floyd Mayweather Jr. for W uh, B O W B A and IBF uh, WBC WBA and IBF. Yeah, Brook had WBO. 
But basically, all three times Pacquiao's tried to unify, he has failed, he has not won. Whereas McLaren has twice beaten a singular champion to become a two-time undisputed champion. But McLaren not making title defences also hurts him. Pacquiao has made title defences at Fly, Super Bantam, Welter, etc. So not only has Pacquiao won titles in these weights, he's also defended titles in multiple weights while becoming a six-weight champion and a five-weight lineal champion in five different divisions. So if I had done a title slide for Manny Pacquiao and Jim McLaren, I would have given it by a massive margin okay, in success, title accomplishment, I would have given it by a massive margin to Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, even though, like I said, Jimmy McLaren coming from fly, twice capturing that undisputed title, you know, you cannot scoff at, but the main point is that Manny Pacquiao is a way more accomplished world title veteran. With way more title fights, McLaren only had four title fights, you know, Pacquiao has had over two dozen title fights, you know, it is really insane what pa- Pacquiao has done, and Pacquiao has managed to maintain his form. Let me just... And Pacquiao has managed to maintain his form so that even though he's won titles in all those low weights coming up in the weights, he was still good enough to compete at a high enough level to become a four-time welterweight champion. Winning it the first time is one thing, winning it the second time is another. But to come back and win it two more times after that, while advanced in age shows Manny Pacquiao's quality. So if there had been a title slide, um, I would have put it massively shifted um, towards Manny Pacquiao. I'd have said Pacquiao wins on the title accomplishments. And people who know me, Chandler, know McLaren's resume. Wilder will give him massive credit for being a two-time linear welterweight champion, a two-time undisputed welterweight champion. I don't think they would really balk at the idea that in terms of title success on its own, the title record, the accomplishments, the lineal titles, the defences... Um, also, McLaren fought great opposition over those four title fights, but also Pacquiao, while not always fighting that insane level of opposition that McLaren fought in those four fights, Manny Pacquiao has as well, you know, fought an insane level of opposition in title fights. So, you know, even though McLaren has a smaller record, you can't outdo Pacquiao by that because Pacquiao also um, has fought a staggering amount. It's kind of like what I mentioned on my Dimitri Bivol video yesterday. Bivol has built a title record and he has a number of good wins on there. That's that's all I can say at the moment for Bivol. He's got some good wins. But Pacquiao has some great wins on his title record and a number of them, okay, over a massive title fight record, over two dozen fights for titles, okay. So title success I would give to Manny Pacquiao uh, by a fair landslide as well. Because like I said, even though I rate the Undisputed and McLaren, the Undisputed tag only goes so far. You know, when a fight at a Pacquiao's um, title fight record size comes along with the accomplishments, it's hard to better it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's where I'd edge there. So, you know, the opposition edge by McLaren on both. Opposition for opposition beat, but still quite close, really. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, to me, more dominates the title accomplishment. So this has been an absolutely insane um, career matchup. Both of these fighters to stress. Who do you think wins the career matchup? Okay, because Pacquiao does win on certain elements. To me, overall, that third slide of career where McLaren has 20 fights, 18 against top three rated fighters. Pacquiao has 18, 17 against top three rated. With all those Hall of Fame trilogies, the list of top level opposition fought on those slides. That is one of the craziest slides I have ever seen. And I'm not sure, you know, aside from a few fighters, if I could find other fighters that could match up in that brutal way. That slide took me like probably 15 minutes to narrate. That is how insane that 45 run was for both. Multiple champs, virtually all of them top three rated fighters, 37 out of 40 top three rated fighters. Multiple, nearly probably half of the total, not half, but just under half at total against all the fame fighters. I mean, it is crazy what they did. But who do you think wins the stat matchup? Okay, who do you think wins the stat matchup? Because ultimately, you know, I can give my thoughts. But ultimately, you know, if any of you people sit at home and consider McLaren and Pacquiao's resume, it's ultimately you are going to decide. Pacquiao has advantages, massive advantage in title legacy. Jimmy McLaren has, to me, the overall advantage in resume. The both for incredible resumes stacked with top-level names. It's a tough matchup. Okay, it's a tough matchup. Uh, McLaren wins on most on more of the stats, but I'll leave it up to you guys to decide.